What's up, everybody? I am Erica, and we are here to react to Interview with the Vampire, Season 1, Episode 3. So, uh, Episode 2, Louis is a vampire, a baby vampire. I don't know. What do you call a group of vampires? Baby vampires? I don't know. Anyway, um... He didn't eat his nephew. Congrat. He didn't eat his nephew. Congratulations to him. Um, Lestal is still terrible. Okay. Um, he is a very emotionally immature person, even though he looks 30 ish when apparently he became a vampire. He is emotionally immature. And I don't know if that's because vampires have to lead, I guess, lonely lives. And he is just so excited. He has a partner now. I don't know. But the way that they handle conflicts is uh, very childish, which I guess. I, I mean, it's apparently the real first relationship Louis's been in. Um, he has never allowed himself to be close to a woman or a man like that so i guess let's just see what happens y'all because i'm ready for Lestal to get a wooden stake through the heart and i hope they find a vampire therapist to do it so they can tell them what's wrong as they die so yeah like comment subscribe and we're just going to go ahead and get into it now starts now. There's a column in here about the history of this lovely square. It says that the man who designed it did so after the first divorce. His purpose to him is to be a companion for him. Let's be clear. Everything is pure instinct. Reason is a set of leg irons. Every one of them is capable of abomination, even the ones worthy of admiration. I hate to say it, but he's right. Anybody is essentially capable of anything. It's mm. <laughs> turning into Minority Report. <laughs> they need some precogs. <laughs> oh, I get the experiment. I get Louis' desire to be more purposeful in their killing to feed their need to their basic need. All right, they need blood. They need just blood but they prefer human blood so i get the experiment 
But Louis is wrong here because why would you tell the most impulsive person you've ever met in your life? Why would you tell him that person? Then he goes and gets that person and then you don't want to do it. Like, that's messed up. I'll never see it for Lestat, but that was messed up for Louis on his part to just grab a cat. When you told him to get this man, why would you do that? Anyway, we're carrying on. Mm-hmm. It did. You're ashamed of what we are. He gonna kill that girl. A fish that doesn't swim. A bird that doesn't fly. a shady bitch. He is trying to read him. Like I said, like I said, this was a horrible relationship from the beginning and he doesn't see that. It's a horrible relationship from the beginning. Good grief. I'm glad Paul is calling him out on his shit. I'm glad that maybe he'll have a different perspective because now somebody gets to analyze objectively what happened to him. So hopefully he can see what he really went through. Mm. Now who's performing? I wonder if human, I mean, well, vampires eating on rats or like small rodents or whatever other than humans. Is that like keto, intermittent fasting for them or something like he like he barely can hold up a book. And Lestat is thriving. So he's on a vampire keto diet, po thing. I've done keto. My deepest sympathies. I heard that about you too. Oh, what have you heard? I'm not a gossip. But I am. Well, people at the Azalea, they say, you're confusing me. <laughs> oh, come now. I don't play. What do the employees at the Azalea say about the real stuff? I'll answer with a question. Are there two beds upstairs? No, you didn't kill her. No. She has talents. Do I have to fuck whoever I want? Of course. And they in an open of relationship. Course. Of course. Now that, of course, is not genuine. Of course. <laughs> of course. Mm -hmm. That's, I'm fine. So, prostitution isn't legal. 
but in an effort to segregate. They have laws on the books or ordinance, ordinance to segregate something that's already illegal. It's illegal. What difference does it make? Racism is such a stupid disease. Like, it's already illegal, boo. Why are we separating the illegal stuff too? Anyway. This was the heart of black business. What the Azalea was known for, the very men who signed the ordinance in the law were some of my best clients. It was an absurdity. Absurdity. To a Creole man who had outpaced his fair skin competitor. Or Jonah. We the point do like get his freak on. Does that age me? Saying freak on. <laughs> He's gonna drink his blood. A little razzle dazzle. See that instinct? Come on, Louie. Come on, Louie, you can do it. We rooting. Keto, 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 keto. Yep. Keto, keto, keto. <laughs> when you are guilty of something and you start explaining before the other person even says the thing that you're guilty of, just hang it up. You're gonna lose this argument anyway. Cause, well, he found, like, well, I didn't even say anything. Mm -mm -mm. Guilty, guilty, guilty. Seeing my invitation got lost in the mail. You wanna come around, you come around when people are awake. Hey, son, son. Son, I'm your son. Let me handle this one more time. You don't. Oh, he was there. He did me some face. He just needs to wake up about what this relationship really is and how they got to this point. Poor thing. Louis is a confused soul. types too as if we're supposed to turn New Orleans into Topeka God help us Salt Lake City my suggest Mr. Bullock if you move your operation to the quarter keep the girls out the windows who you suggest gonna sell me a property in the quarter make Mr. Leon a court here in the public face of your operation this is who is helping helping this together Mr. Dulac I'll be happy to buy the property back from you see Fifteen cents on the dollar. I was what? I was manic. And in America, make him a vampire. Fuck with that vampire and see what comes of it. It is fortunate. I'll let you reload. 
Now, why would you even bother? sign on that man like that? That was stupid. Unless you was going to stand right next to it and take credit for it. Alright. Well, that was episode three of Interview with the Vampire. Um, an interesting episode. Um, I like how they don't shy away from that time period and how it was for black people in the South and, um, how that intertwines with being in an interracial relationship and also how Jim Crow came for every Southern state. It wasn't just Mississippi or Alabama. It was Florida, it was Louisiana, it was, it was everywhere. So I think um, the sensibilities of Jim Crow, well, not the sensibilities, but the sensibilities of New Orleans and how they initially tried to have it, if you got enough money, you can pay to play and race doesn't matter as much. Now they were still races. But um, I guess with the war looming and more soldiers of both races being around, they had to get on board with the rest of the Jim, Jim Crow train. So um, hmm. Louis Creole heritage um, did afford him certain privileges before Jim Crow really settled into New Orleans. And I think that that uh, Alderman was right when he was thinking like, you know, he holding on to his Creole nature. You just a Negro now. You just a, you just a Negro. Light skinned Negro, but you a Negro and you can't be surpassing the white man, you know even though he's a better business owner and whatever, that doesn't matter. You are Negro, so you got to go. And uh, Louis just thought that that wouldn't come for him specifically. So that was him being naive in his privilege. And also, um, I think just being naive, period. Like he thought that those white men as long as he's making money, then it's okay. And that's not the case. Uh, racism doesn't really care about money at the end of the day. Um, it's just keeping a certain narrative going. So uh, we're gonna see Claudia, which I'm assuming from the movie that was Kirsten Dunst. So now this is a new version of Claudia that we'll see in episode four. Um, like, comment, subscribe. Please let me know what you think of uh, this episode as well. And um, I will see you guys next time.